mention about maybe individuals or uh, companies or businesses. If you have any question, please, uh, Baraza, you can share, you can ask. Okay. So let's continue. Now, the purpose of OSINT, before we can be able to do anything or before we can be able to attack per se, quote unquote, because when it comes to ethical hacking, you're not attacking for nefarious purposes. You're, you're trying to look for vulnerabilities or weaknesses with your target so that you can be able to have them secure it much better. It's like you're a thief and in, in any attack or any type of uh, malicious attempt, you must understand your target. So by using OSINT, you can be able to understand the target so that you can be able to maybe, for example, if it's in a, a, a website, your website, you want to know your targets, you can be able to get information about the guys who have visited, who visit your website via the cookies. And also you can, you can see when most websites usually uh, ask you to enable cookies so that they can get their, some information about you, about the visitor from their location, the time they visited, the type of browser, which creates a profile of that individual or that visitor. And, as you, and when it comes to OSINT also, you can be able to build a profile of your target so that you can be able to say, now this target, this is the kind of uh, individual this target is in terms of maybe their psychological state, uh, their preferences, their activities also. And you can also be able to use that information to track that individual over a period of time. And when it comes to social media, social media usually does very well in having people have uh, being able to track people over a period of time. And when you accept cookies also, it allows the websites to, uh, to get your information and be able to track you over the times you visit. And one, one of the things here, when it comes to tracking, I can uh, highlight was a few years ago, WhatsApp, uh, using a specific tool on GitHub, you could be able to track people who are online and you could be able to attract the activities on WhatsApp. I'm not so sure nowadays whether that tool is uh, available, it's uh, functional because they, WhatsApp uh, introduced a few measures so that they can, so that you can be able to prevent that. But it was possible a few years ago, around 2016, 2017, there were specific tools on GitHub which you could be able to download. And the tool was written in Python and give your targets. You, re you register your WhatsApp account, you get the API key and through that, you just provide the number and it will collect all information about that target, when that target has been online, so that you can know this target sleeps at this particular time, this target is more active at this particular time, or this target works at this particular time. So that is uh, some, of the, some of the uses of OSINT. Now, the tools you are going to look at are tools like Google, The Harvester, Whois, and Shodan. Now, Shodan, I'm, I'm not going to show you for now because this one is just an Michael, I think we've lost you. We're not able to hear you. So please confirm if you're able to hear us. Or is anyone able to hear Michael? If you can hear Michael, just raise your hand. Okay. So let's test the module. Good search. While we wait for Michael to get back, um, just for the individuals who are joining in, um, for day two, we are dealing with OSINT and Google docking for Recon. As you remember, uh, yesterday, we said Recon was one of the most important steps in it. In fact, it is the first, actually, it's the first step, reconnaissance, um, uh, first step of ethical hacking. So, um, 
For those of you who are joining, please uh, feel welcome. Thank you for setting uh, your time aside to join us on the two of us. Uh, Michael, however, is the one who is leading us, so let's allow him to get back. And I think he may have been disconnected to a whole team uh, internet. I'm going to wait for Michael to get back. And just a quick reminder that I've not received many responses from our session yesterday on the assignment that we gave out. So if you haven't made your response yet, please make sure you do as soon as possible. It goes for four hours, so uh, I'll access in the next four hours. Welcome back, Michael. Hello. <laughs> I was out because of the recording. So, I, where, where, uh, did you, where did I leave you guys? Because I can go back and start. Um, you're talking about, you're telling us that you're not going to be covering Shodan. Then you're yes, oh, okay. Right? Yeah, now, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to be covering Shodan at this stage because uh, Shodan is something that we're going to cover at a later stage, either tomorrow or at an advance, uh, at one of the advanced stages uh, from one of our members. We're going to, however, cover Google. We're going to cover who is, so that we can, because these are tools that are publicly accessible by any entity, so that you can be able to see how things work or how information, how you can be able to get information about any entity. So when it comes to Google, what we're doing is trying to find resources that are both allowed to be accessed by the public and not allowed, but they are within the public domain. And anything that is within the public domain that is accessible with, through Google, you can be able to access it. And we are going to see how. Now, before we start uh, searching uh, using, uh, before we start actually diving into using Google Docs, or Google hacking, we need to understand that there are things called advanced operators. And advanced operators are like the way normally people search for any information using Google by using a keyword, for example, KCSFA yes, or, okay. yes? Uh, is it yes? possible to share your screen? Yeah, actually, uh, let me share it again. Yes, please. Can you see it? <coughs> is it visible? Not yet. It's a thing loading up. Not yet showing. Yes, it's loading up now. Yeah, good. You cannot see advanced operators. Okay, now, now when it comes to advanced operators, uh, unlike the way people normally search for any information uh, through Google, people usually search using keys, uh, keywords. For example, hacking. You can search for anything that is called hacking using Google. You can search for KCSFA on Google and you'll get any in, in information. You can search for my name or your name. You can even Google yourself to see how much information 
there is on Google, uh, publicly available, uh, available through Google. Now, <clears throat> in order for you to filter the information available so that you can be able to access specific information, you need to use advanced operators, like the way people use SQL queries to filter out information from a database from a large volume of data. And when it comes to doing that, we usually use something, uh, the operator and search term. And you can combine multiple operators and search terms to filter them further, like using multiple SQL queries, you join multiple uh, queries, uh, uh, what do you call it? You, you join multiple data uh, tables. Now, as you can see, the operator is what will tell Google to filter. And the search term is the keyword that will be used, okay? Now, in this operator, for example, if I want to search for any information, any, any website in Kenya, I can just replace the term operator here with site and the search term with KE so that it will, it will list all results from any website that has a .co .ke at the end. It will list all sites with a .ke at the end. And you can search it for, you can fill, you can, you can specify it for your own country or for any organization. Now, as you can see, these are some of the filters, as you can see here, there's in title and it will search. And when it comes to in title, uh, it will search for any information that the, where the title uh, matches the keyword that you've provided. And you're going to do that here. There's all in title, searches for all strings within the title page. Uh, within the page title in URL. And one of the things here, when you, can, when you see in URL, some of, the, uh, some of the queries using in URL people use is, for, is to try and find, for example, pirated uh, content online. If you use Google to search for any, for example, you are looking for a, mo a movie or a series and you can't find it, you can use in URL to find maybe and write the name of the series and then add file type, for example, uh, in URL, and then uh, Game of Thrones space, uh, file type, full colon, uh, MP4. So it will search, or it will search, it will scout through the internet for all MP4 files that, of, uh, that, uh, that have the keyword Game of Thrones. I'm, I'm not telling you to do that because that, that could be, that could land you into trouble, but I'm just giving you, uh, 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 what do you call it, some insight on how that can be done. There's also file type. You can search for specific files within a particular website. And by the way, when it comes to this file type, if I want to look for, for example, you have a website online and you back up your website and the data is accessible from Google. The website, the code, the code base, even the data at the database is accessible from Google. What, I, what I'll just do is just write, maybe I'll just fill, I'll just write the site, which is your site, maybe .com, your website.com. And then I write file type uh, dot zip, file type uh, zip, a full file type, full colon zip, or file type SQL. So it will scour your website to get any information, any, any file that is contained within your website that is accessible from Google, that is either an SQL file or a zip file. That is how people usually get the code base of a particular website when people don't properly and back up their sites in an, uh, in an offline uh, storage or repository. So now there's all in text. And when it comes to all in text, if you want to search, for example, you want to search for a document that contains maybe an ID number you can use all in text. For example, if it's a PDF, or let's say, let's say we are looking for an Excel file. You can use file type, full colon, XLS, or XLSX, and then all in text space, all in text, full colon, your ID number or the ID number or the phone number. It will scour the net for all files, all spreadsheet files, for example, Excel files that contain your ID number and it will provide you so that you can be able to click in and download it. And you're going to see about the site, we have discussed that and linked, which will show the linked, uh, such linked pages. Let's proceed. Now, as you can see, this is an example. For example, as you can see here, this site, site, uh, sorry, 
let me go back. The site dot site full colon K E in title, full colon, as you can see in quotes, let's hack stuff. And file type is zip. So it will look for, it will scour the internet for all zip files that have the name let's hack stuff that are within Kenya, within any, uh, within a website that is within the Kenyan domain. And as you can see, the second one, the second example, it's site KE. That means search any website within the .ke domain and the U, within the URL, there is backup. And the backup, the URL, for example, is slash backup. My website, uh, dot, maybe .co.ke slash backup, and it will look for any file that is of type SQL. Now that is what we'll do for the second one. And this one, you can just write it on the Google, uh, Google search, uh, the, query, the query text box, and it will provide you with results. You can change any information, any of the search keywords there so that you can see whether uh, you can get any results from that. So now, apart from that, you notice that in Google, when you search for certain information, you can get website links that have something called the cache has an option for cache, view cache. Now, the advantage of view cache for hackers or for people who want to access certain information is because when you, maybe for example, you had information or you had posted a, a, a file in Google that was not supposed to, you had posted a file on your website that was not supposed to be accessed publicly, but Google was able to access it and it was reported. Then you removed that file. Google might still have that file itself because it has cached it in, in, its, uh, in one of its servers. So when you search for that information and it shows you, when you click on it and it gives you that this file no longer exists, but you see something called cache, when you click on view cache, it will bring that old file. Now, as you can see, people usually do that so that they, if, uh, maybe a file, for example, when it comes to information, you see people can mistakenly post information about uh, maybe post files that are not supposed to be accessible. And then when they're told, they remove that file. But once Google has cached that file, that file can be accessed from Google because it will not be accessed directly from your server, but it will be accessed from Google server, uh, Google one of Google's storage server, which uh, was able to create a copy of your file so that it would be closer to the person uh, trying to access that uh, file itself. Now, uh, when we're talking about uh, this type of Googling, as you can see, anonymous Googling, uh, the, you can use proxies uh, like Tor or any other type of uh, proxy service so that, uh, so that you can be able to access, maybe a, uh, you can be able to perform these functions. But uh, one of the funny things when it comes to Google hacking and when it comes to some of the hacking methods or some of the reports that have been um, what do you call it? some of the cases that have been noticed over from for example from early 2010s to early 20 early 2010s to later 2010s was that there are some hackers what they do is that instead of targeting one particular website they just go and search they perform they do the google docs and see whether they can get a uh, whichever targets they get if they get those targets, they can expand their search to, uh, to see whether they can access any other uh, websites. That's why you can see, you, you notice sometimes some random website has been hacked, not because that, that website was targeted, but because there was some information that was exposed from that website that was accessible by Google and the attacker used Google to be able to access that information and to uh, to access that information and leverage on that information to compromise that particular website. That is how that is how some of the hackers usually do when it comes to finding vulnerabilities. Some of some of these websites are usually not just targeted. They are just uh, access the first way the first channel of accessing those websites or the vulnerabilities of those websites is by using Google. You see what bytes. It's like uh, throwing a search term. See what results you'll get, and from the results you'll get you try to compromise it based on whatever information you've, uh, you've gotten out of that. Now, uh, be, now, when it comes to advanced operators, we also need to use special characters, as you can see here. In special characters, you can add, you can force the inclusion of something common 
you can exclude a search term. For example, when it comes to, when you're searching for, let's, let's say, for example, you are looking for maybe any subdomain within a particular website. Let's say my website.co.ke. <coughs> but I don't want the results from directly my website.co.ke. I want to see the results from subdomains. I want to see how many subdomains I have in that website. What I'll do is just exclude the search. I'll exclude my web. I'll search anything. For example, let me show you here. Uh, as you can see here, as you can see this one, this example here, there is, sorry, there is site example.com and filter out everything that is accessed directly from example.com. So what we'll do, so what Google will do is that it will get every information, but it will leave out anything that is directly accessible from the root URL. So it will try to look for subdomains. If there's users, if there are accounts, uh, whatever accounts you can, you can be able to get, it will try to look at any subdomain and provide information from the subdomains. That is how people, uh, that is one way people usually use in order to find the subdomains of a particular website, which might not be, which might uh, not, should not be accessed publicly or non-publicly, but Google is able to access it and it will provide that uh, subdomain to you. And so that you can be able to access it and get all those resources. So uh, can we get started with a simple example? Hello? Yes, uh, Michael, you can proceed. That okay, let's start with the Let me start with this. Does anyone have any question up to there, up to where we are right now? Okay, so let me share. Okay, let me use this. So let's start with this website. Now we can go to Google. Now, from that, what we can do, what we can start with is, let's start with something trivial, something simple. We want to see the results from all websites that are within Kenya. So I'll just write site and KE. As you can see, site, full colon, KE. Let me do this. Let me just, uh, let, me, let me open in, uh, just a minute. Okay, google.com. So as you can see, if I want to search for any site that is within Kenya, I can just write site, full colon, KE. So it will search for any website that is within uh, the .ke domain. As you can see, these are some websites. I can even filter further. For example, I'll write co.ke. It will search for all websites that are under .co.ke, okay? And I'd like you also to follow, follow, uh, follow with me so that we can be able to go together and be able to learn a few things and try a few things. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Now, yes. um, okay, sure, nice. So the, the next thing we can do is that we can try to look at whether you can be able to find, for example, 
uh, let's try to look for any website that is a .com website that has a zip file within it. So we can do site com and then file type. File type zip. Uh, I think I've looked, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh -huh. Site K. Let's put it, let's change it to English so that Let's start, let's start with file type. Doesn't match any documents. Do I have to be signed in? Let's, let's do this. Let's just try to type. Okay, and we can say site form. Category compressed files. Uh, let me see something that has a, let's see, let's write SQL. SQL. Oh, am I writing it correctly? Let's remove these first. Okay, let's try in site. Um, how about having the yeah. SQL in quotes? Oh, by the way, SQL. Can we narrow, let's narrow it down. Let's use something that can be accessible, like XLS and site KE. And also, Michael, uh, Adam has actually uh, made a correction. It's actually should be file type. File type, okay. Yes. I wanted to filter well, am I writing it correctly? Because I think I'm having issues. Let me try to open an, another, let me use a simple tab and When I write file type, it doesn't give the correct, it doesn't give any results. Oh, now we can, let's do this. Okay, I've used a, I've tried with a different browser and I've removed the quotes instead of, and this is what it has given. Can you see that? So I'm looking for any Excel file that is within any website that is within the .ke website. Now, uh, are we together? Hello, are we together? Anyone? Yes. Yes, Michael. Okay. So. As you can see now, let's let me show you something. Okay, now when it comes to the cache, let's click on here. Uh, let's see whether we have cache information. Oh, as you can see, can you see this cache cached here? 
Now, when, it, when the information, for example, if that information existed in that website and it was removed, you can be able to, you can still be able to access that information by clicking on the cached. And get get that information from the. As you can see, this information I don't think it's supposed to be accessible. Does it? So uh, that is one of the function. And then, as you can see, uh, can anyone provide a domain? Let's see whether you can be able to try a simple example that will not violate any. Uh, <laughs> any terms or we can do this let's let's try any uh, website that uh, people can people can use let me do a simple example here okay okay let's use site um let's use, uh, dot com and minus site <laughs> see it and then uh, www dot dot com as you can see now the results that are provided what I've done is uh, uh, what I've done I've told Google search for any results from the domain google.com but leave out the results you get that are directly accessible from www.google.com so it will list all uh, subdomain inform uh, resources that are available and you can see when it comes to subdomain uh, resources you can notice that there are some websites that can have something like maybe accounts uh maybe users dot uh whatever dot their domain now those that information maybe it's not allowed it's not supposed to be accessed uh publicly but because it's uh a subdomain that is accessible from google google can be able to list for you all the subdomains within the within that particular domain that is one of the ways in which people usually find or scar for subdomains of a particular domain that they want to target because mostly, mostly I find that the information that you might need, or if you want to target a website and see the vulnerabilities, you might not get it within the index page or within the publicly accessible, maybe the first root level domain. But there may, might be other subdomains that can give you access to particular uh, modules or systems that have been hosted online from that website that are accessible within that domain, but not directly. So does anyone have a question? As I hope you guys can be able to, oh, let me trust you. Let, let me see EQ, EQ mic. Okay, let's do this on uh, the site. It's equamic.io minus site, www okay as you can see there is blog uh so they are actually yours are blogs and that's a subdomain within a domain as you can see the results that have been presented none of them is directly accessible from equamic.io if i remove this i'll be able to get everything that uh is within a website uh -huh. and the results are more So uh, since we have tested Equal Mike's uh, uh, results, we can try to see other things we can be able to do when it comes to uh, website hacking. Now, uh, not website hacking, but Google hacking of and trying to find information that is accessible online. So let's see whether we can try to find any server that has, uh, that is accessible for, via port 8080. And you, you notice that there are some webcams that are usually accessible from port 8080. The, 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 only, the web service of that security cam is accessible from port 8080. So you can do this in URL, in URL, full colon, 8080, and 
we can remove in text. 8080. Now, what I've done here is that I'm looking for all websites, for all web resources that at the end of the site, for example, something.com, there is the full colon and 8080. And I am removing all results that within the text says 8080. And the reason as to why I'm removing all text that, are, that, that says 8080 is because some of the results, if you have these, on, if, you ha if you only have these, it will give you even tutorials, maybe uh, Apache, tuto uh, Apache tutorials, Tomcat tutorials for websites, Spring tutorials that have, uh, dot, uh, have 8080 within the text. So let's try that. And as you can see, can you see the results? We can also filter it further. Let's add site AE. As you can see, we are, we are filtering results based on, based on a combination of operators. I hope, I hope you guys are trying out stuff here. I hope you guys are trying out stuff. Yes, but you're a little bit fast. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll slow down the pace. So let me explain this one. What I've done is I've looked for any site within the .kenya, the, the, .co, the .ke domain that has at the end something, something, like for example, as you can see, this one. Can you see this .8080, this one here? We are, that is what we are trying to, to look at. We are filtering based on this in URL. This is what we are targeting. Now, apart from that, we don't want tutorials that have or any website that gives us 8080. For example, let me show you. If I remove that in text, it will give us, for example, can you see this? 8080, this is, this is irrelevant information that is being provided, but we don't want that. As you can see, like this one, this is irrelevant information. So in order for us to filter out that information, we're just telling Google minus in text, 880. Okay. Uh, let us try another. Let us try another one. So let us see whether we can be able to uh, have, for example, uh, we can look for a file type. Let's look for uh, an SQL type, SQL file, and that SQL file within the file itself, there should be something like identified by. ID I and CVS. No, 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 sorry. Uh, <laughs> Is that come on? <laughs> so, as you can see, okay, this is GitHub. Can you see all these files? And we can even okay. So, as you can see, these results here, and you know what CVS is, isn't it? The three digit numbers at the back of ATM cards. Okay. We can also try to filter. I, if everyone is here, we can also try to do this. Now let's look for any website that has a PHP my admin uh, panel. So let's do in title full colon PHP my admin. Maybe if I if I just write it like that, or if I leave it, it should provide the results. So, and then 
we want to see, okay, the PHP my admin uh, pages, login pages usually has maybe something like welcome to uh, PHP my admin, like this. Let's, let's, let's see. Uh, PHP my admin uh, login page. Can go to images. And by the way, you can do that when it comes to looking for different types of login pages. As you can see, this one here. Can you see this? Welcome to PHP My Admin. This one. Welcome to PHP My Admin. Now, that page, that, that is, inf that is uh, information that I'd want to use so that I can filter the results to provide me with anything that has that phrase. So what I'll do is I'll come here and write, uh, welcome, no, 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 no. Welcome to PHP my admin. Okay. And we can add a lot of styles here so that if there's anything else, we can leave it. It can provide. And then apart from that, we can see whether we have any information like running on. Okay. Running on maybe something as root. Let's see the results. Uh, and title, and normally the URLs, the login URLs uh, in URL. Okay, let's do this. Let's search PHP my admin. How to access PHP my admin. And example, it can be WAP, but if you look at that, uh -huh, as you can see, this information here, that one, as you can see, this is a URL. So this is the part of the URL that is of interest to us. So we can come here and URL. URL and HP my admin. Let's see whether we can remove this one. In URL, let's start with this. In URL, PHP my admin. Local hosts. No, 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 not this one. Let's see. And let's see here. Not HP. No, 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 no. Let's leave it at that. And site. Let's see within Kenya. See whether it will give us interesting results. Uh -huh. Let me filter it further. Expand the search base. And text. Ah, now you've seen uh, Google now has detected it as some unusual traffic. This is a good feature uh, from Google just to make sure that you are searching for a hydrant, hydrant, hydrant.
as you can see now please oh boy let's go back because now were we supposed to access the inf this information for example this i don't think we are supposed to access that isn't it Hello, can you, can you see uh, some of the results here? At least I need some interaction so that I can know that I'm presenting something now. For example, this one. Welcome to PHP, my yes. admin. This one. Yeah, we're, we're seeing it, Michael. Yeah, so uh, there's, now when it comes to these sites, Google does give us access to this, uh, this page. Uh, the resources, is, this is a resource. And that resource is accessible via Google. And maybe it's not supposed to be publicly known, but since uh, Google can be able to access it, when you search for that information, you can be able to access it. And those are some of the information, some, some of the things that people don't need to access. Uh, people don't need to access, but Google can help you access that information. And even you can try to see whether your own website, your own domain has, uh, exposes such information to, your, uh, to Google, which can be used by an attacker. Also, when it comes to finding uh, other things, for example, you want to look for code bases, like uh, files that have uh, PHP code bases. You can start with like file, let's say file type. File type we can include, yeah, let's see. In text, within that file, we need MySQL, let's go connect. Now this, is, PHP usually uses these a lot when it comes to the code base. See, this is a this is a keyword from PHP. So if you want to see whether you can be able to find those uh, any file that has that, such a result, you can just click on it and see the results from Google. I think I've done it incorrectly. Uh, and see in text. Oh, my SQ. SQL okay now I'm not going to click on those sites because uh, this is not I'm, I'm just showing you how you can be able to uh, get some information online about uh, using Google Docs in order to access uh, whatever content you want, but I'm not going to access that site so that uh, I don't want to write any rules in. I just, I'm just showing how this can be done. And this is not the basics of how things can be done. Now, in order for you to access more information from uh, websites or using or to be able to apply Google Docs to any other resource, I'd suggest, I'd highly recommend exploit DB. Exploit hyphen. Let's just write exploit DB. Google Docs. And now this is where you can get a lot of resources that can help you look for information, even files. For example, if you want to, if you want to look for uh, documents, maybe you're researching on a particular, to when you, if you're a, maybe you're a researcher and you're looking for certain publications that are not freely accessible, you can use Google Docs to search for uh, to search for those documents. People do use Google Docs to also search for uh, what do you call this? To search for pirated uh, material or uh, pirated resources. And the resources are many. Let's let let it just load. My internet is a little bit slow. But this is the website that you can use. 
the exploit-db.com slash google-hacking-database. So that's, uh, that's the end of my introduction on Google uh, hacking and exploit DB. Uh, not exploit DB, uh, Google hacking and a few things on OSINT. Oh, now let me show you a thing. Uh, when it comes to websites, if you want to find out information about a particular website, uh, the, the IP address, the provider of that resource, you can just write who is. Let's write who. And this is what I usually use. Uh, you can use in either of these, as you can see, who is .com, who dot is. There is I can look up. And once you select, okay, this one, no, who dot is does not work. Who is .com. Now the purpose of this is if you enter the domain name, it will give you the provider. It will give you. Uh, it will give you information about that website from the provider, from the hosting service, uh, who owns that website. It will provide that information. So when you get uh, these, uh, what do you call them? Fishing links, you can also try to find out who owns that.
Uh, hello, guys, and uh, I sincerely apologize. KB, the KTLC decided to pull a fast move on me and where I live. So there's no electricity, but I've managed to connect using the uh, Wi Fi bundles, uh, data bundles. Hello, is everyone here? Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, we are in. Yeah, now, uh, since I've been able to uh, demonstrate some of the Google hack, uh, uh, Google Docs uh, hacking uh, steps uh, or OSINT uh, steps, do does anyone have a question or i hope you guys have been able to try out using your own uh pcs to see whether you can be able to get information about anything including yourselves if you have any questions you can ask Yeah, the reason, uh, the, reason, the reason I've done that is because I've completed uh, what I wanted to demonstrate. And I've given, you, I've given you the link to some of the resources that uh, I use in order to search for anything like this. As you can see, this here. This is the exploit DB. So you can take your time and try to search for anything. You can try to test the, to test out these uh, links and see what information you can be able to get from Google. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the introduction to Google hacking and a little bit of OSINT. The who is domain allows you to, it just provides information about uh, a particular website. For example, if I write, uh, um, Google is unavailable. Let's try. Let's try this. Mm, let's try a different who is a uh, resource. This one and domain tools. Oh, let's try different domain tools. And this is publicly available information. So okay. let's see. As you can see, these are the results. Uh, the first two didn't provide, as you can see, ABT, oh, Safaricom. Uh, 
so the register of kplc.co.k is safaricom these are the numbers obviously these are safaricom numbers it was created on it was created in 2003 updated 2020 and it expires this year on december 31st and by the way this information here this one especially this one there are people who try to wait for domains to expire the minute they just expire it's a, a high value domain they purchase it immediately and then the owners the true owners of the domain will have to buy it back so never let your domain expire and these are name servers uh -huh. hosted on the safaricom network that's okay registered in kenya and this is just information the this is the tabulated information that is gotten from this one here what they just do is just uh, like regex and uh, map based on the keywords. So, does anyone have a question up to there? Because uh, I think I've exhausted what I was supposed to present tonight, but I welcome any and all questions from the audience and from the participants, even suggestions and comments. You're welcome, Ajahn Kapu. If there, any, if there is any question, please ask. If there's any comment, just uh, state it. If there are suggestions, please feel free to share. This is an interactive session and we need as much uh, contribution from you guys. Thank you, Peter. Kinyomu. The reason as to why I searched using KPLC is because KPLC uh, have decided that uh, electricity in this area is not compulsory and it can be an option like credit thank you thank you josh kinoti thank you shell ruddy the shorter one will come at a later stage the shorter one must be presented that one is a given but then you can try to you can try to look for subdomains within the domains that we have used here and see we can see how how much information can be able to get out of that i'm saying you can not you should so if anything happens if you do, if you violate any rules or any laws that's on you Oh, the documentation. Actually, there will be a there, there will be a class or uh, there will be a session on how you document your findings from the penetration testing from OSINT to the final uh, uh, what do you call it the final uh, privilege escalation or what do you call it the once you compromise and once you've done you've collected all information there will be a session. And the session will be conducted by those who have done it in their field and show you how they present their data or their inform or their findings to clients. That, that will be a separate session. So Shadrach, that one must be done. We, we, uh, we must cover that also. Uh, no, it's, it doesn't need to be filled in for, uh, 24 hours. It, that one is up to the, dis, uh, it's the, the discretion of the presenter uh, to decide how long the form should be accessible online so that they can be able to collect as much information as they, uh, after they, after they, they present. Let's see, Peter. No, the, the, 
let me sh- let me also share the form link Shared it. Actually, uh, Adam, uh, for that question, you, when you're using Google Docs, you're not accessing the, that uh, remote host directly first. The, what what happens is that you're accessing resources from that target from Google. Now Google is the one which is accessing the, uh, the target itself and providing you with the results. Once you click on that link, that is when you're accessing that particular resource. And that resource is publicly available. And I, uh, f- and when it's publicly ac- accessible, it's up to them to prevent uh, access for, or for that resource from specific, uh, f- for the, from the public via either uh, restricting access to IPs or any other any other methods that they may decide to use. Thank you, Feng. Uh, actually, not, not yet. <laughs> uh, George, I do not yet have a YouTube channel. I was thinking of doing one on cryptography and some of the projects I've been working on, but that will be at a later stage. For now, let's focus on the 100 days of uh, hacking and have uh, the trainers give us as much insight and information and training as possible within the period that uh, we've stated. Yes, Sheldon, uh, Sheldon. Oh, there wasn't one yesterday. Yesterday there was, but that uh, Baraza, Jones Baraza was in charge. Questions, comments, suggestions? Okay, for those who have not, who are not able to fill in yesterday's uh, form, or yesterday's session's form, Jones has posted it on the chat, uh, the inbox, the in chat, the in, the chat itself, and you guys have an hour to fill in that. And for the next one, for the one for today, you can fill it uh, from today until th- just before tomorrow's session, like uh, tomorrow at around five. Lauren Gitahi, thank you very much. You're most welcome. No, they're not supposed to be day one. Uh, Jones, we'll see to we'll see to just fill in. Uh, the, as you can see, the link, the Discord app, the channels, the link I've shared is for the Discord app. You can access it by there but just fill in yesterday's form. I'll also share today's form, I'll reshare. We'll edit it and uh, you'll be able to fill it in. Thank you, Francis. I'll be... Albertini, Francis, thank you very much. Uh, which record? Oh, the record for yesterday, uh, Cloud Rica. Uh, Jones will share the recordings for yesterday and it will also be accessible via uh, YouTube. And today's, uh, today's recordings will be accessible. Uh, I think it will be accessible by the end of uh, today's class and from Discord, it will also be accessible on YouTube and any other thing. Yes, let me follow you. Ajahn, let me follow you. That one I will. 
let me note it, let me note. It, it, we have, uh, it, uh, the sessions will be posted on several YouTube pages, uh, YouTube uh, uh, channels, but each individual instructor will have their own channels which will be accessible. Uh, we are going to post the trainings uh, both from the public, uh, from our collaborators' uh, channels like KCSFA and SheHacks, and we'll also have it shared on our individual channels. So for those who are, for those like us who do not have our own individual channels uh, active yet, that will be at a later stage, but we'll also share the links to the channels. Mwendoa, thank you very much. Any suggestions? You can unmute your mics, by the way, and contribute if you want. So will these be every day? Yeah, no, it will be three days a week. And uh, for example, this week it's today. It was yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And next week, uh, the instructor will determine, but mostly it will be like Tuesday, uh, either Tuesday, when is between Tuesday and Friday. So three days within that, or three days from the uh, four day period. Okay, and the next session will be tomorrow? Yeah. Awesome, thanks. And by the way, if, if you have, any, if you have uh, anything that you might want to share or train people on, we, we are very glad to have you as an instructor also for anything you, not, you might be interested in training. Claude, Rika, please. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I, I, I joined in very late and um, the network has been very horrible from my end. And listening to the previous sessions and uh, watching some screenshots, I was super excited and I followed your tweets and I was very, very excited to join. Sadly, it's rounding up. Please, that's why I was asking some few questions. If you could share the video link, maybe the YouTube link, so I can follow through. And I really love the assessment and I would love to be part of it. So I clicked on the link you shared and this is day one. So is there going to be a link for day two session assessment? Actually, after each session, there will be assessments so that you guys can, uh, after each topic, there will be assessments, uh, which will be take away. Which will, and the reason why we will be combining the assessments to one topic will be so that guys can be able to cover a broad range of activities and we can have a discussion within the, uh, when we move into the next topic for the next week. And all session, all every, uh, the results of your trainings, if, there's, if there, we, we see that people are facing challenges, we'll discuss them and see how those challenges can be uh, remediated. Okay, that's uh, fine. Yeah. So what, could you share me the YouTube link, please? Okay, I do not have a YouTube oh, link, I'm, but we are going to once we share. I could it, search. I'm going to okay, post. where the video is where to upload it. We have not yet uploaded the videos on YouTube. Okay, that's fine. But we are uh, we are going to do that uh, as soon as possible, and I'm going to share it uh, from my page, from my Facebook page, uh, okay, from my fine. Twitter page, and we're also going to share it on Discord. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you so much. And whoever wants to be an instructor or any whoever wants to train on any topic, please contact us so that you can slot you in and have you uh, share knowledge with everyone. Okay, that's all right, thank you. Yes. Hey, Michael. So uh, I hope you don't mind this question. It's kind of out of topic. Do us. Uh, today, I just encountered someone on Twitter saying that uh, he he found a website that is that is filtering that is not accepting uh, to the BAP suit. Uh -huh. Like he can't he can't check it or using BAP suit. Yeah. And was wondering why how how could that happen? 
because it's kind of blocking the, the traffic that is passing through Bapsut. Now, uh, that one's a little bit tricky. Uh, if I give you an answer on that, I'll be speculating. The best person to give you an appropriate answer for websites that uh, block uh, requests from apps like uh, Bubsuit, uh, that one will have Munir, Munir Njiru to come and uh, teach us on that. Because the, the thing that I've only done that I've seen how you can be able to block uh, DDoS traffic, for example, when you're using uh, flooding apps to see how much stress a website can take. So blocking only the blocking part is only what I'm confident about. I'm confident about. But for things like Babsuit requests and alterations of data using Babsuit, that one I'd also like to I'd also love to learn using uh, from people like Monir. Okay. So we'll have a session on Babsuit. That's a definite. We'll have a session on everything that is from every every topic there must be tools we are going to demonstrate. And we're okay. going to try and focus on the freely and free and open source, av open source available tools. And if those who have commercial tools and are allowed to use them have uh, the right to use them, they can still demonstrate the features of their tools. This will be, at, uh, actually the first lesson is just an introduction theory. Second and third should be practical. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Shell Ruddy, uh, we, we've already started uh, the practical part, but this one is just a basic introduction. And right now what we're focusing on is the reconnaissance part. And within reconnaissance, what you're looking at is uh, open source intelligence and Google, Google hacking. Jones. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael. Also, wanted to mention that um, this practical is going to be essentially uh, done on several ranges. We have a different platform, that has like a sensitive situation. We also have a uh, walkthrough to try happy, uh, hack the box. So, uh, we're not limiting ourselves to one platform. And also, let me mention that we'll be dependent on the instructor because uh, another instructor will be part of the session on, uh, on uh, hack the box. Another we use or to save the So it's good that we're going to use a, a number of uh, platforms so that we get to familiarize ourselves with different platforms and how we can work. And by the way, I do not have all answers to every question. So for those who might know something that I do not know, at least you can provide an answer here because we'd prefer this one be an interactive session. Um, concerning the question about the website, uh, the website is going to replace the website. You can also try and look at um, um, the headers that are being submitted by Babsuit uh, because the house has specific headers that recognize Babsuit. And maybe the website is not up for that specific header. That's why we have, um, uh, you can try uh, putting the headers. Um, in other than by passing the blocks from um, the blocks is very much. Yes, Tracy, uh, the recordings for all sessions will be available once Jones has uh, completed compiling them. And the links to the uh, recordings shall be shared from Discord, Chase, uh, our social media, our social, our socials, and also on YouTube. And we are going to provide the links to the, uh, the videos or the recordings. That was uh, the answer to Tracy. You're welcome.
do ask, do comment. At least we have a, uh, we have about ten minutes. If you have any suggestions, even if you have suggestions on what you'd love to learn, please tell us so that you can be able to get in touch with an expert in the field, have the expert slotted uh, within the timeline, and then we can have you trained on that. We, we do not have a session on hardware hacking yet, uh, but let's see whether that can be possible if we can be able to have an instructor, both an instructor and the resources to have that as part of our lessons on the 100 days of hacking. Thanks for the question, Vimwendwa. But then let me ask. So um, this is a question I can pose to you. There was a question on Twitter that asked how, whether the IT should report to security or security should report to IT. And in my own uh, in my own uh, question now, based on that, is should that question be phrased that way or what would you suggest or what would you comment on that when it comes to uh, the organizational structure? Yes, Jones. Um, thank you, Michael. Uh, concerning that particular question, I would say that um, it's a bit more, it will be more realistic if IT reported to security. Because at the end of the day, it's, uh, if anything happens to pay in the IT department, especially security wise, it's the security key that is often um, yeah. the volume key. And also, the security is also a task with overseeing almost all aspects of um, the IT market. And I'll give an example of that, uh, DevOps. Um, before uh, introduction of security in the development process, we only had the developers and the operations team. Yeah. But then again, uh, the, the, there was um, the, the, the failure, mostly from both teams resulted in the introduction of uh, security in between uh, the development of the operations team. So which means that security is actually a very integral aspect. And uh, considering the fact that develop, the, the developers come before security, it also makes yeah. logical sense that developers report to security, hence IT reports to security. Also, um, that's just my view. So I'm open to criticism. Now, based on that, now, based on that uh, response, what about uh, when IT wants to introduce policies, internal policies, will they have to get authorization to implement those policies from security or does security define its own policies and have IT implement them? How will that go? In terms of uh, policies, I think they, they, there must be synergy because when the IT is coming up with the policies, they should yeah. have a security team inside uh, that team that is coming up with the policies. Because when you say that the development team, like the IT has uh, their own policies, the security has its own policies, then that means there might be a collision at some point. So it will be important that when, especially when it's for terms of uh, policy formulation, that there's a synergy, there's that mutual communication between the two. Okay, uh, nice. Questions, we have about six minutes to end this session. Any questions, comments, suggestions, recommendations? Are we satisfied with today's session up to where we are? 
Should we wait for the five minutes to end or is everyone content? Ah, nice. Thank you, Ajen Kapu. Uh, Adam, Adam uh, the, the assessment will be sent today via Discord. This to you, thanks. Yes, the Tracy Mukuru. Yes, the access to the Discord server is available. We'll, uh, you're most welcome and thanks for participating, Adams. Let me 